So everyone's got their knickers in a twist because North Korea are about to do another long-range rocket test and everyone suspects that's going to lead to nuclear weapons. But it's probably not because they're pretty shit at these rocket tests. And I know that some countries are upset and I can understand that. You know, South Korea and Japan must be a little bit ooh, trepidatious because it's never fun when your neighbor's being a bit of a dick. It doesn't matter what they're doing. They could be mowing the lawn at 5 a.m., stealing your underpants off the washing line, or developing intercontinental ballistic missiles. It's very difficult to love thy neighbor when you suspect thy neighbor is wanting to wipe you off the face of the planet. But still, I want to see North Korea do their missile test. And part of it, look, is schadenfreude. Let me, let me get that out straight away. Part of me wants to watch them do the test because chances are it's going to go tits up like all the rest of them have and I get to sit smugly in a first world country and say, pfft, can't even test a missile. I mean, it's not bloody rocket science. But part of me wants to also let them do a missile test because you know what? We are always in the West so hypocritical and patronizing to countries that don't do things very well. We always say to them, hey, if you first you don't succeed, try, try again. Yeah, if you fall off the horse, yeah, get back in the saddle. But then suddenly we only want those mantras to apply to little engines that couldn't and people who are actually riding horses because as soon as North Korea or Iran show the slightest bit of nuclear missile gumption, we're suddenly like, whoa, hey, stop, whoa. <laughs> oh, oh god, I can't believe it. Oh no, I see what you did. You, oh, you've misunderstood the saying. Yeah, I, I, I know. I know what you think it says, but it's actually, if at first you don't succeed, no nuclear weapons for you. I know. Oh, uh, crazy. Sounds weird on the ears, doesn't it? Nuts. So, you know, I, maybe we have to force Korea to go back to doing what they do really well, which is having the worst set of priorities in the entire world. It's the thing that I find most fascinating about this country. You know, it's a country that doesn't have so many things. Uh, good water source, reliable electricity, infrastructure, roads, democracy, despite the name. Uh, and what are the two things they aggressively pursue the most? Nuclear weapons and Olympic gold medals. Uh, and, you know, and to their credit, they won four Olympic gold in London. They won four. That is more than Denmark and Spain and Brazil. In fact, it's more than like Ireland, Sweden, Mexico, Argentina, Indonesia, India and Portugal all put together. They won all of that and they won it without reliable electricity. And you know, people in North Korea would have loved to have watched those medal wins, but they couldn't. Do you know why? TV didn't work. Do you know why? No electricity. Do you know why? No infrastructure. Do you know why? Because the government was spending all its time and effort on judo, weightlifting and atomic weapons. And that is a weird set of priorities. It's, we've got to do something about it. Like, who is setting those? Is it just, like, a group of men in a shadowy room, drunk? Because you would say something in any other circumstance. If you rocked into work and you saw Dave and Accounts sitting there in a top hat and a monocle, but no underpants or trousers, you'd say something. You might only say, hey, nice hat, but your wang's out, and that's not okay. I think we should say that to North Korea. We've got to tell them their wang's out, and it's not okay. Because they're in a position where they're not going to want to spend money on the boring stuff because we've got all the cool stuff. It must be a terrible time to have to go, oh, I've got to buy Rhodes and a polio vaccine when I just want to buy an iPad. But that's what they've got to do. There's this, I've got a sneaking suspicion that most people in Korea, North Korea especially, probably want reliable electricity and some food more than they want the ability to rain down nuclear death on their immediate neighbors. But they're not going to get that until their government gets the rockets. So, here's my idea. We all chip in. Yeah, chip in. Uh, it's a New Zealand plan, right? Uh, I came up with it while I was watching The Hobbit. It's not out, but I'm progressive. We all chip in and we buy them a rocket. And not even a shit one. We buy them a pretty good rocket. It won't be expensive if we all put some money on. Yeah, Angola, I'm looking at you. You have to put in some money. Right, so we all put in. We get them a rocket and... Uh, we obviously don't fill it with plutonium, uh, but we should fill it with something that's just as expensive, like uh, airport coffee or printer ink or something. And we get the rocket, we put a big bow on it, we put it on the 38th parallel, and we just sneak away in the dead of night. And hopefully they'll, they'll be satisfied. You know, I mean, I think you've got to be optimistic about these type of things, but there's a good chance they'll come out, they'll see the rocket, put it in the trophy room next to the atomic gold, and then they'll just go back to being weird neighbours. Yeah, I, I don't think they're not, they're not going to mow the border crossings at 5 a.m. or they're going to stop stealing our underpants off the washing line, but sometimes you just got to be happy with small mercies.